two dynamic actors, two fascinating takes. Let's have some fun. I'm Jeff Savage, and this is Take Two. Welcome to Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. Improv is one of the signature elements of this talk show and a crucial part of any actor's training. It stretches the imagination and encourages spontaneity and often unlocks the door to some creative and unexpected surprises. But today, we not only welcome two improv superstars to the set, they are also owners of the Comedy Arena in McKinney, Texas, a live venue to not only experience comedy shows, but to learn all about the craft of improv. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Vaughn Daniel and Brett Femright. Gentlemen, welcome to Take Two. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Absolutely. You know, today I want to uh, start with a little bit of background for our audience. Can you give our uh, audience a little bit of history on what inspired you to open up your own comedy club and why the name The Comedy Arena? Okay, well, uh, the, the Comedy Club kind of happened by accident. Um, it was one of those things where um, years ago started an improv troupe and this troupe was kind of like a gypsy. We traveled all over. We would rent out different venues. And after about eight years of doing that, I was tired of lugging equipment everywhere, <laughs> sound equipment, costumes. Uh, so I was like, it would be really cool if we had a spot that everything just was there. Sure. So it's opening a club. Gotcha. Uh, what's the genesis of the name, the Comedy Arena? So uh, primarily we have a comedy troupe called Comedy Sports, and it's comedy done as a sport. We have two teams that compete head-to-head, -head, green team, and a, I'm sorry, a red team and a blue team. We have a referee, and there's fouls called so arena just kind of felt right yeah. in a sports kind of environment. Gotcha. So, so it's good in a competitive way, kind of like Thunderdome. You know, two may enter, yeah. one may leave, or yeah. what have you. So, well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, here on Take Two, we highlight improv as an essential skill of any working actor. But uh, knowing that um, improv can also help or enhance the lives of everyday people, how do how do you see improv uh, benefiting people who aren't necessarily actors who just in their daily lives? I have a story about that. Let's hear it. <laughs> my uh, my uh, wife Michelle and her uh, good friend, business partner, actually uh, recently decided to take a class after months and months and months of me urging them to do so because they're uh, they own a business, a franchise, and they day to day have to sell the product, and it's a hard sell. Uh, it's a luxury item, um, and so uh, they were like, "This this can only help us." So they took the class uh, reluctantly, and and they were very scared and they're scared every week to be on stage. But every week, she updates me on, yeah, here, here's, here's what's going on, do you wanna practice this game with me? And she's becoming uh, re very much more confident in just in speaking with people in general, but in speaking to large groups, uh, leading meetings, uh, and, and sales uh, prowess as well. So that's been, that's been pretty cool to see. That's great, yeah. it's great. And uh, improv, I think, is something that, you know, it's not just for actors. Mm -hmm. You know, there are real world examples where having to be spontaneous and creative in whatever you're uh, taking a stand on is can only help you in, in life and everything like that. One of the things that I was thrilled about when I went to thecomedyarena.com uh, to your website was not just seeing that you know you're a great venue that like I said hosts great comedy shows but you teach improv classes workshops all the way from beginner level all the way up to you know, master classes mm -hmm. in that. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about your classes and uh, you know what you offer for the community? So improv is one of those things that people don't really realize how much we utilize it every single day. We get students that come in and they're just like, I'm not good at improv, I, I'm horrible at it. And then I ask them, did you know what you were gonna say today? Did you know we were gonna have this conversation? You're literally improvising right now. So it's just a matter of just yes anding and working with the person that you're actually interacting with. Um, we do a lot of different classes anyway, as you mentioned, from beginner's classes all the way to master's classes where we can teach you how to develop your own troupe. Uh, we also do a lot of corporate training uh, where we go into corporations and show them how improv could be utilized for uh, all the different aspects of business, nonverbal communication, eye contact, working together as a team, all these things that you don't really think about, improv really pulls out of people. Um, the great thing also about improv is that it's fun. Um, going into these businesses, we play games with these executives that are now, you know, as adults, we forget to play. 
and improv helps pull some of that out of people. Well, that's fantastic. And that also segues into another aspect of what you uh, do with the Comedy Arena, that you're also for hire for corporate uh, ventures and things like that. Brett, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the Comedy Arena on the road? Sure. <laughs> we always like to joke at the end of every show, we say, uh, if you have a company or just want company, you can hire us. Uh, so we have done shows for you know very large uh, corporate events, team building. We just this past Tuesday did a show in the middle of the night uh, from 2 a.m. Well, in the middle of the morning, yeah. 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., uh, a bunch of graduating high school seniors, which was uh, challenging, also very fun. <laughs> um, but you know, they would fade in and out of, of sleep and, and wake back up and participate. It was, it was a really good time. So we will tailor an event to just about any, any business, uh, school, um, you name it. So um, we're, there's a form you can fill out on our website that kind of tell us what you want and we'll design a program for you and to meet the needs of your budget and everything. Great, and uh, do they contact you uh, as far as to set that up? Is there a certain way that our audience can reach out to the Comedy Arena to access that information? Oh, well actually, the, I'm glad you asked that. So if you go to thecomedyarena.com, uh, there is a link that says hire us and there's a form that you fill out with a few questions. Um, and the cool thing about it is that our third partner who's not here, Jared actually, Jared Berger, uh, hey Jared, Sorry you couldn't be here. Uh, um, he would actually get that form and he's like our lead guy to contact with, to work back and forth, liaison, so to speak, with the customers to make sure that they get everything they need. Oh, fantastic. That, that's great. You know, getting, getting the, you know, the craft out in front of t the corporate America to students, to kids, to, to anybody who uh, needs that creative edge is, is yeah. a great way to, yeah. uh, to go about doing that. But uh, you know, I want to kind of segue back to the theme of Take Two, which is also uh, you know taking an inside look at the working world of the of the performer. Mm -hmm. And you both provide a unique aspect in that you're not just performers; mm -hmm. you are business owners. Mm -hmm. You are owners of a comedy club, and that takes a lot of, uh, I imagine, stress and pressure. How do you cope with that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and still find ways to to have fun? Well, I literally get to play for a living. I mean, I teach adults how to play. I, we do, we have summer camps, we play with kids, so I'm always playing. Um, if you have a job that you hate, find a way to play in that job and you'll hate it less. Um, I mean, on a day to day, we're either teaching games on how to make funny faces or how to make funny voices. So I mean, who, who wouldn't love a job like that? Right. right. It reminds me of uh, Mary Poppins and mm -hmm. the spoonful of sugar yeah. helps the medicine go down. <laughs> it it right. does. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's, a, that's very exciting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned because when we come back from break, I'm going to put these two uh, improv superstars in the hot seat to actually show us a little bit of improv here today. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audiobook is also available on Audible and the iTunes store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. Let's face it, people tend to put trust in professionals that stand out from the crowd with a distinguished and unique personal brand. In today's competitive digital world, one of the most powerful ways to achieve this top of mind awareness is with a personal branding video. A personal branding video is a more engaging way to deliver your message. It generates more trust with your audience. It improves your online presence and it's an easily shareable marketing asset. Go to personalbrandingvideo.now.site for all of the details and upcoming dates for our next personal branding video day at SyncLab Media. We'll see you at our next personal branding video day. Welcome back to Take Two, where we are going to put our two improv superstars to the test. They're gonna actually show us a little bit of the basic fundamental concept of improv called Yes And, and they're going to guide us through that to teach you a little bit lesson on uh, the importance of that. So Vaughn, Brett, show us a little bit about improv. Okay, uh, well, 
for anybody who has ever heard or listened to or watched anything about improv, uh, yes and is kind of like the baseline of introduction to improv. And we're going to kind of give you a quick example of how that can work or, or not work. So the thought is, is that anything that you do in improv is you accept it. Um, and by accepting it, you say yes, and and would add more information to it, which in turn will let your scene build. Uh, we're, we'll do an example of a uh, not doing that. So for example, if I said, uh, hey Brett, um, I heard it's your birthday today. Happy birthday. It's not my birthday today. Uh, I heard that, it, that your mom s said that she should buy you a cake because today was a special day. Today is not just, just a regular Tuesday afternoon. Well, I did buy you this cake. Thanks. All right, so you kind of see how that was kind of, <laughs> kind of painful, kind of, kind of going through the muck of that because Brett and I weren't working together. We were kind of fighting each other, so to speak, on getting the scene to move forward. Now let's try it again, uh, this time with a little more yes and involved. Okay. Hey, Brett, I heard it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. Yeah, I actually have a great party tonight planned, so uh, are you coming? Well, and because, yes, and because you had this great party, I'm going to bring Stephanie. Yes. We all like Stephanie. Stephanie's a lot of fun. Glad you're bringing her. Yes, well, Stephanie is a master baker, and she's making us a three-tier chocolate cake just for you. Seriously? Seriously. That is amazing. All right, so you can see how the scene kind of has an opportunity to build and move somewhere versus just getting stuck in the muck and just saying no. So. That, and that's fantastic. And also you can imagine how in life in general, being agreeable and building and uh, you know, team building, morale building in your work, you know, being a little bit more agreeable with people can kind of take you further than being a stick in the mud. <laughs> so that's awesome. Thank you for showing us uh, in our audience a little bit about uh, you know, the power of improv and the power of uh, agreeability. It. So being you know, the owners of a comedy club that uh, takes a lot of uh, attention. When was the comedy arena started, and uh, like, a, wh what's the history of the club itself? So we started the club. Actually, we just celebrated our sixth year anniversary. Fantastic! Uh, just back in April. Congratulations! Um, it's it started basically out of a need, as I mentioned. You know, we needed a place and a venue, and McKinney was a city that was really, really opening. Uh, they didn't have a comedy club, and I was like, well, I'm opening a comedy club, so we kind of just picked McKinney and we ended up in a spot that's downtown, historical downtown, which is pretty awesome because it's got a lot of shops, a lot of restaurants, it's a lot of it's family orientated, which is really great for us because our club is a family friendly club. So we have shows for kids, we have summer camps, and we also do, you know, high school leagues, we have different things for all ages. That's fantastic. So it kind of fits really well that we ended up in McKinney. Well, that's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I joined in 20, well, gosh, it's been a year now. Mm -hmm. It's my year anniversary. Oh, anniversary. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Stephanie <laughs> bought you cake. Man, free tier right here. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, so uh, I had been performing there. So Vaughn and I met in 2016, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and I, was, I still am part of a group called uh, Dark Knight Players, but he was helping out a little bit mm -hmm. with some improv stuff because some of the group was new to the improv. It's a variety troupe, so we do sketch, we do improv, we do... Uh, some other types of artists like dance and song and all that, but um, so he was right. That's where I met Vaughn through that group, mm -hmm. and so uh, w at some point we had the opportunity to perform at the uh, newly created comedy arena. Mm -hmm. So we were in a late show, and I remember after the show, Vaughn said, "Why don't you come over here and do what we're doing? Yeah, you know, try try some try what we're doing. Come to the funny side. Yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, so I, you know, first opportunity I got when there was a, a tryout, I did. So I'd been performing there for three years already. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was looking for a business opportunity outside of my normal day to day. So I was like, well, why don't I do something I'm passionate in, right? So I just approached Vaughn and was like, yeah. hey, I'd, look at me. I, I'd love to be a part of what, you know, the day to day operation and, and be an owner and, uh, and, and live into that. So that's kind of how it all got started for me. Well, it was, it was like either this or vending machines? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> But I, <laughs> but I love that because it, it highlights, you know, the working world of, mm -hmm. uh, of, you know, the performer and that it's not all about just getting in front of the camera and being funny or acting. There's a lot of work that goes into actually doing this as a profession. It's a business. It is indeed. It is indeed. And speaking of business, where do you see, like, uh, the comedy arena taking you in the future? Like, what's next for Vaughn Daniel? Well, next for me is 
I get to hang out with these, this guy and Jared, and we're basically building our company up. Um, we'd love to possibly open another one somewhere else. Not sure exactly where, um, but this model that we have in front of us is pretty successful. So we're trying to see if we can do it somewhere else. That's fantastic. Uh, Brett, same question to you. Uh, I would, I would, I'm very big on um, the vision of opening additional locations. Very big. I, and that, in fact, when we started talking about becoming partners, that was m one of my visions was, you know, I'd love to see, you know, the Comedy Arena Dallas, the Comedy Arena Oklahoma City, again, just mm -hmm. as examples, but, um, and kind of cookie cutter and build this out across multiple cities and multiple states. Uh, that was my vision. And it aligned with with theirs, so mm -hmm. uh, him and Jared, so that was good. Um, so that's that's what I'd really like to see happen at, at some gotcha. point in the near future. Yeah. Very good. Well, I would like to remind our audience that you can uh, find out all the information about the Comedy Arena by visiting thecomedyarena.com. But uh, Vaughn and Brett, I want to I want you to have the opportunity to tell our audience how they can find out more about you uh, individually if you want to share the information or about the Comedy Arena in general. <laughs> I'm on. I, I'm on all the social media: Instagram, Facebook, uh, Brett Femright. Uh, I, I do some theater acting too on the side, but uh, yeah, that's where you'll find me. Um, next up for me is uh, this Saturday. I'll be in a comedy sports match <laughs> at the okay. Comedy Arena, so come and check it out at uh, six o'clock. Excellent. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I'm the Big Von Dan. Uh, I also do artwork, so you can find me doing artwork as well too. Instagram on artwork is VondidArt2, numerical number two. Um, I'm on the socials, the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams, the MySpaces. The LinkedIn's the, is... The, yeah. LinkedIn. Aren't you in LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah, LinkedIn, okay. LinkedIn. Um, and that's at Von Daniel. So, hope to see you guys soon. Uh, also, just check us out at thecomedyarena.com because we're all over that website. That is awesome. Very, very talented and very fascinating conversation with you both. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you can find Take Two on Binge Network on our YouTube channel at Sync Lab Media Studio or by downloading the Sync Lab Media Network app on your smart TV on Roku, Amazon Fire, Google Play, and Apple TV. I'm your host, Jeff Savage, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.